Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for taking out time and joining me in today's session. Today is day four of our Azure Security Series. Uh, today, we would be looking at uh, three very interesting and important topics, which is Azure Monitor, Azure Defender, or uh, also known as Azure Security Center, and Azure Sentinel. So, so far we have covered uh, three days of content where we spoke about uh, the first day, it was more around identity and uh, security uh, services around identity management. The day two was around uh, infrastructure as a service security. So virtual machine, storage, networking, security. The third day, uh, which was the last week, uh, we spoke about application security, uh, we looked at Key Vault, we looked at uh, storage security as well. Uh, so these are things that we have discussed so far. And today we'll be looking at uh, three interesting services, which basically will look at everything, all the security features that we have covered so far, right? So with Monitor, Defender and Sentinel, it will look at the virtual machine security, identity, key wall, database, containers, uh, storage, all the security um, is, is being looked at by these three services. So these three uh, Azure services are very important and critical if you're an organization looking to become a managed security service provider, right? So uh, in today's session, uh, uh, I don't have a live demo, I do have uh, snapshots that I've taken from a demo tenant so that I can help you understand how the uh, service works, what are the functionalities that you would get, and also hopefully give you some ideas of how you can start providing uh, security services or possibly set up your own security operation center using a, a combination of these three services. A quick introduction about myself. My name is Roshan. I've been working with Ingram Micro for about four years now. I've been working on Azure for the last eight to nine years. Um, I started my IT journey by working on SharePoint. Uh, Microsoft was the first company that I joined back in 2008. Uh, started with SharePoint, uh, did a lot of SharePoint migrations and upgrades, then moved to BPOS and Office 365, and then started working on cloud or Microsoft Azure. So I've been pretty much a Microsoft guy throughout my career. Uh, from the time I've started working with Ingram, I've been exposed to other vendors like AWS, IBM Cloud, uh, Veeam, uh, Commvault, uh, monitoring solutions. So uh, I, I'm, I'm able to put together combination of technologies to help partners um, fit the customer requirement and also their budget. Uh, I've worked with Microsoft uh, as a vendor. I've worked with uh, Gold Certified Partners, and now I'm working with a distributor. So um, I definitely understand uh, the channel market, the channel business. And uh, if you have any questions around Azure or Microsoft Cloud in general, please feel free to drop me an email. Um, I would be more than happy to take up your questions, answer them. And if I'm not the right person, I'll probably redirect you to the right person. Uh, so that you get uh, your answers. So that's about me. Uh, let me quickly uh, run a couple of polls just to make sure uh, everybody is able to hear me clearly. So I'd appreciate if everybody can participate and let me know if you're able to hear me loud and clear. Wonderful, I see everybody is able to hear me clearly. That's uh, very good to know. Uh, like always, if you have any questions, uh, please use the chat or uh, the Q&A uh, option. Uh, I will be reviewing it uh, throughout the session, uh, especially during uh, the demo, uh, demo time and hopefully answer all your questions. Now, a quick update about the recording and slides. They have not been shared yet. Uh, the idea is I'll complete the series and then send out a single email which includes um, the recording and slides uh, of all the four sessions. So you should expect it this week. And uh, yeah, once you receive it, go through it. If you have any questions, um, do, do get in touch with me.
Okay, so let's get on to the first service, uh, which is Azure Monitor. Uh, Azure Monitor is uh, a service that can collect data from several locations or several sources and provide you with a graphical user interface in order to understand uh, what's going on within that particular data source. For example, let's say you're running uh, several virtual machines here using app services to host your websites. And you want to understand how well are your virtual machines utilizing storage and core and RAM? Uh, have you uh, over spec the server? Have you under spec the server? Uh, how, how good or bad is the latency? Uh, how many users are accessing your website on app, serv on app services? So things like this is what you can get with Azure Monitor, right? So Azure Monitor can pull data from operating system level, from Azure services, uh, from custom sources. So it also has an agent which you could potentially install on your uh, uh, virtual machines uh, or servers, uh, for example, pull the data and um, get, a, get a very interactive dashboard uh, and understand how your applications or uh, servers are performing. Now, as you can see in this particular screen, on the left-hand side are your, the sources from where you can pull the information. Uh, the output is typically in the form of log or matrix. Now, we'll talk about what is a log, what is a matrix in, in the upcoming slides. Uh, but these are the two, I would say, uh, output parameters that you would get by, by pushing the information from data sources. And once you have this, you can get insights about virtual machines. You can visualize them using Power BI or Dashboard, for example. You can even analyze um, or you can do a trend analysis, right? So if you'd like to know, was my uh, machine uh, overutilized over a period of time or is it a sudden spike? So things like this is what you can analyze you can also respond. So for example, uh, you'd you can go ahead and define alerts saying, if my uh, server CPU utilization is more than 80% for five minutes or more, then uh, the IT or somebody in the IT team should be sent out an email, right? So that's possibly one, uh, one alert. You can also uh, configure auto scaling. So the same rule, if it's high consumption, then automatically um, uh, go ahead and add another machine or, or uh, trigger another uh, database to be added. So things like this can be, uh, can be part of your automation process or respond process. You can definitely integrate it with logic apps and ingest this information into another monitoring solution. So let's say if you already have a monitoring solution like uh, and a solar winds or uh, you have manage engine which you're using to monitor your your systems and you want to pull the data from Azure and push it into a centralized monitoring uh, platform for your enterprise, that is definitely possible as well. A lot of enterprise customers uh, use event grid. So event grid is, uh, think of it as uh, an event uh, management portal where events from pretty much every service that's running in Azure can be collated. And this, this event hub can then push the data into streaming service. It can push the data into um, other application like a monitoring solutions. Things like this can, can also be used. So a very extensive, uh, uh, I would say, solution. It, it, it can integrate with pretty much most of the Azure services. So right from uh, all infrastructure as service like virtual machine storage, networking, uh, it can do platform as service like app services, IoT services can also be used. So if you have a lot of IoT devices pushing and pulling data from IoT Hub and would like to understand at what time is uh, are my data being pulled and pushed? Is the infrastructure um, uh, capable enough to handle the load? So things like this is what you can actually get out of monitoring or Azure Monitor. Like I said, there are two basic parameters that are uh, that come as an output uh, from Azure Monitor. So one is called metrics. So metrics is a numerical value uh, 
which is uh, which which provides you information at a specific point of time. For example, uh, bandwidth is is a metric. So if you want to know how much data was transferred from let's say, your data center into Azure or Azure uh, to your data center, and that's where you could potentially use metrics, right? Which basically it provides you information saying uh, at a specific time. 125 MB was transferred, 200 MB was transferred. So it shows you that um, uh, metric related information over a, a, over a period of time. Uh, this also provides you real time information. Uh, some of the metrics within uh, Azure are out of the box. I'll quickly show a demo of it, especially when you create uh, virtual machines, right? So uh, you can get some basic information about that virtual machine. Uh, um, as, as part of monitoring. For example, in CP utilization, it's disk IOPS, uh, things like these. So there are about three to four uh, out of the box uh, monitoring agent uh, or monitoring uh, metrics that are projected by Azure uh, on default for virtual machines. Uh, I'll like quickly show that. But let's say if you wanna know how your RAM is being utilized, that piece of information is not available by default. You need to enable Azure monitor, have the agent deployed, on the virtual machine, and then you can start getting more and more information about your virtual machine. Uh, the back end of Azure Monitor is log analytics, right? So this is again, uh, sorry, going back one one step. So we spoke about metrics. We uh, quickly talking about logs. Logs is data that uh, can be very unstructured, right? So it can be data with respect to how users. Uh, how and when users are accessing your systems. It can be data with respect to uh, SQL queries. It can be data with respect to uh, system logs. So it's it's not metrics, it's more of what's happening within the application or within the operating system. That is where logs uh, come into place. Now, uh, for logs, there is a specific service. Uh, this is uh, probably used by a lot of uh, uh, services that we'll be talking today. This is uh, this is the backbone of Azure Monitor, Azure Defender, and Azure Sentinel, right? So log analytics is the service um, that helps you collect and analyze data that's generated by resources uh, in Azure, in AWS, or even in your on-prem environment. Uh, it gives you real-time uh, insights uh, uh, by uh, by analyzing millions of records across all your application, uh, regardless of where they are running. Uh, now, the most important uh, uh, piece of log analytics is that it has its own engine, uh, a log search engine that is able to uh, run through the logs that are um, that that are uploaded or that gets uh, dumped into the repository of uh, log analytics and you are able to search through query through this particular log analytics and get meaningful information now the data that goes into log analytics it is again coming via an agent that is installed on uh, on the system right so the way the uh, data gets pulled is using a log analytics um, agent, and this log analytics agent can also integrate with your on-premise uh, system center operations manager as well. Right, so uh, the log analytics service uh, uh, collects and stores data in the repository. Uh, the computer agents, which are installed on your virtual machine, let me bring out the pointer. So the virtual uh, the agents which are installed on the virtual machines. Uh, these agents uh, basically can collect the data. Now, the data which it is getting collected is with respect to operating system, with respect to application, I'm assuming things like SQL is, is installed or your, uh, uh, let's say, Exchange server, if, if you're still running on a virtual machine. If those things are installed, then yes, you can definitely pull data from those, uh, uh, from those systems. Uh, and then those systems data go into log analytics service, which are stored in a repository. And of course you would end up using storage uh, to store this. Also, if you want to analyze uh, 
are you azure storage related information so any service within azure like storage or network or platform as a service data uh, we call them as diagnostic data right so even diagnostic data can be pulled and processed within uh, log analytics as well so not just a uh, virtual machine and operating system even service related logs that get generated so for example within a storage you might have logs things like um, permission changes container creation or blob creation uh, user access creation uh, or user access information uh, creation and deletion of data within the azure storage so these are uh, logs that get generated within the service within the within the resource of azure so these diagnostic data can also be pulled from Azure services and uh, used within a uh, log analytics to manage and monitor them. So, like I said, uh, quite an uh, important and, and, and a very scalable extensive service. You don't have to worry about uh, the scalability, especially the repository scalability. You don't have to worry about it. It's think of it as a managed log analytics service, right? So the uh, the scalability, the functionality, uh, the uptime of it is, is all taken and managed by Microsoft. All you need to do is connect to different sources and uh, figure out how do you want the information to be displayed or what do you want from the data that is collected, right? What kind of information? Uh, quickly talking about Azure Monitor Alerts. Like I said, uh, Azure Monitor Alerts uh, they can be uh, a way of uh, you being uh, proactive in nature and looking at uh, looking at potential issues before they become an issue or be before an error is triggered. So you can always uh, select a resource, define a condition, and then define an action group. Action group is nothing but uh, who should respond or is it a logic app that gets uh, applied or have you defined a workflow that gets triggered? So that is what an action group is. Condition can be, like I said, a condition is typically associated with a matrix. Uh, so a matrix can be uh, CPU, it can be latency, it can be disk IOPS, it can be uh, other metrics that are available. I'll, I'll quickly show you some of the alerts that you can create and, and the various metrics that are available. Uh, and once you define uh, the source, the metrics, and the action group, uh, it can be a very proactive way of uh, handling, uh, acknowledging, and closing uh, the issues even before um, your customer uh, raises up with you. Uh, diagnostic logging, like I said, uh, diagnostic logging uh, is very helpful for services that are on Azure. Uh, one of the uh, classic use cases that I've seen diagnostic logging is Windows Virtual Desktop. Windows Virtual Desktop is now a service that's offered within Azure. Uh, now it has a lot of moving components, right? So Windows Virtual Desktop is managed by Microsoft. So all your um, gateway server, session broker, uh, your uh, uh, licensing server, all these and even SQL Server uh, is, is all managed and maintained by Microsoft. You only worry about your session host or terminal server, right? But when a user accesses information, he's still traversing through the entire uh, RDS architecture and then hitting the terminal server or, or session host. So uh, if you would like to understand details about uh, user session, how the sessions are performing, how your virtual machines are performing, uh, how, uh, uh, what's the latency? Do you see a spike in the morning, uh, especially during nine and 10 when a lot of users are logging in? Are you able to auto scale during this time? So that's that's been becoming a, a very classic use case of Azure Monitor with the diagnostic logging because all this data is coming out of a, a Windows Virtual Desktop service. So uh, let's jump on a quick demo. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to use uh, the chat uh, or the Q&A and uh, uh, let me know. Let me log into my Azure portal in the meanwhile. 
Let me see if the screen sharing is still happening. Yep. Okay. Let me open up another browser. I'm sorry, guys. Just give me a second. Okay. If you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to use the chat or the Q&A and let me know. So there's a question saying, can we monitor or see the console screen if there is no tool? Uh, uh, Prakash, I'm not able to understand your question. So are you asking, uh, is there a way that we can still get monitoring information without deploying Azure Monitor or, uh, or without deploying the, the agent? Uh, if you can just rephrase your question, that'll be helpful. So let me show you a couple of quick uh, examples. Let me just make sure there are some VMs running. Okay, so I have this particular virtual machine running. Now, if I go to the monitoring piece of it, right? So this is the by default monitoring uh, information that I get as part of um, uh, Azure Monitor. Right? And, and this is uh, the default uh, capability that, that is there. So I can see that uh, over, over a period of time, and these are all metrics, right? So these are all metrics, key metrics that I can see. So over a period of time, CPU, network, uh, uh, disk writes, uh, disk uh, operations, so, right? So these are information I can go up to seven days, 30 days. So I can look at a uh, trend of how my uh, virtual machines have been performing, right? Now, if you'd like to see all the key metrics, if I click on it, you will see these are the various uh, metrics that are available, right? Uh, one of the frequent questions that I get from partners is, how can I uh, look at uh, network in and out, right? So as you can see, network out total is available. So for example, this gives you information about how much data is going out of this virtual machine. Uh, bandwidth uh, is, is calculated purely based on uh, consumption, which means um, within Azure, uh, if you download anything from Azure, right, uh, then every every month 5 GB is free, but anything over 5 GB is charged. So how do you keep a tab on it? That this is one of the ways of how you can keep a tab. Now, now that there is a matrix, you can actually go ahead and create an alert based on this matrix, right? Saying that if uh, 5 GB, if, if if the network out is 4.5, then somebody should be notified, right? So that is how you can proactively monitor and make sure that uh, one, your customer is also notified because after 5GB, they'll end up paying more. Uh, and at the same time, you are also in control of what's happening uh, within the Azure infrastructure, right? Now, all this information is coming in uh, because if I go to the extensions, you can see I have this Azure monitoring agent uh, enabled on this particular uh, virtual machine, right? Uh, it provides me more and more information once I have this uh, monitoring agent deployed. Uh, so this is a, a quick uh, demo of how the information is provided. And as I said, Azure monitor is a service by itself. If I go into Azure monitor, uh, and if I look at metrics, it will give me details about, okay, should I select it from a particular subscription, resource, location, and then I'm able to look into various insights. So under insights, I can look at virtual machine insights, uh, storage uh, accounts. So currently 14 of my virtual machines are not being monitored. I can also go ahead and enable 
uh, monitoring. Now, for some of them, it is saying cannot uh, enable. Uh, one of the reason is the virtual machine may not be running, right? But if it's enabled, I can just click enable here and this will go ahead, deploy the agent and start pulling the data from that agent. Now in the backend, there is also a log analytics workspace that is already created that is storing all this data, which it, it starts uh, pulling uh, from, right? Uh, that's also uh, something to keep in mind. Let me show you uh, if I also have Windows Virtual Desktop. So within Windows Virtual Desktop, like I said, you also have insights now. And um, within Windows Virtual Desktop, this, this particular template for monitoring is provided by Microsoft. So it, it, be, it becomes very effective, easy and simple to now get detailed information about how your Windows Virtual Desktop is performing. So in an overview, I can see host pools, right? Status, upgrade, um, upgrade failed, new sessions are allowed, session stack, availability, right? If I scroll down, connection diagnostics. I have not been using this particular setup for quite some time, but you can see event log errors, right? Um, input latency. So all of this detailed information, monthly users, daily users, very detailed, uh, very crisp information is provided with respect to your uh, virtual desktop. And I think uh, this definitely puts you in the driver's seat, especially whenever you have issues. This is probably the place uh, to start looking for information and funneling it down to a particular, it can be particular user, particular session host, or particular session itself, right? So even in terms of connection uh, performance, time to connect, top 10 highest uh, connection time taken. So all this information is available uh, as a template and you can create your own template as well. So uh, the template creation is called workbooks, right? So if I click on workbooks, uh, there are several workbooks that Microsoft uh, have given. Um, one of the workbook is Windows Virtual Desktop Insights. You can create your own workbook. Uh, you can also connect to uh, uh, GitHub and browse through a lot of community uh, templates or community work, uh, workbooks that are there and further customize it according to your requirement. So uh, definitely very helpful. Uh, even if you're not using virtual desktop, I would still recommend you to always have Azure Monitor enabled on each and every service. It can be storage, networking, Azure virtual machine, have it enabled because it not only provides you information of what is happening, it, one of the outcome is you being able to alert, get alerts, notification, and also uh, orchestrate or do an automation. Wherever there is an issue, you are able to uh, have an automated response to it. It can be scaling up a virtual machine. It can be adding another virtual machine or adding storage or, or notifying. So all these uh, can now become part of your uh, operations, right? Managed operations or, or managed services offering to your customer, which will definitely add more value to them. So I'll just uh, pause here for a minute and let me know if anybody has any questions. Okay, no questions coming up. So I assume everything is clear and I'll proceed further. The next one is Azure Defender. Now Azure Defender is a new term. The earlier term was Azure Security Center. So uh, while, while I describe uh, this particular service, I, I sometimes uh, mix up Defender and Security Center, but remember it's the same service. Um, the older name was Azure Security Center. Now it's known as Azure Defender. Okay. So uh, Azure Defender helps you with several cyber security uh, incident or, or it, it, it basically helps you with managing your cyber security uh, incidents, right? It provides you 
features and functionality throughout the cyber kill chain. And in the next slide, you will see what are the what is cyber kill chain and what are the functionalities that Azure Defender provides. Uh, you, we'll also look at what are the features that Azure Defender has. And then we'll look at some of the most important features uh, that I think is very, very important for every organization to use and enable. The first one is secure score. Uh, now secure score is now becoming a, a default norm for a lot of customers, especially, due, especially during pandemic where people are working from remote locations, spinning up new services um, and, and moving more and more data into cloud. So making sure you have um, the highest secure score or, or a good secure score is very important. Um, and one of the very interesting features that Defender provides is just-in-time virtual machine access. So we we'll look into these two detail, uh, these two features in, in a greater detail uh, today. Uh, but having said that, it, it definitely provides several functionality. For example, uh, it, it actually has a section for compliance uh, and regulatory uh, management, right? Uh, during uh, the demo will we'll definitely go through the, them as well. Um, and you will see how you can have a standardized uh, security practice across your customers by using Azure Defender. So talking first about, uh, uh, this is the cyber kill chain, right? So uh, these are the various steps that actually a ha hacker goes through in order to get, uh, I would say, complete access into your infrastructure. So the first step uh, is called uh, a recall in sense, where uh, the attackers access your network and services, and then they start identifying which is the target or which is uh, the machine or the service that provides them with the highest privilege, right? So typically that's Active Directory or domain admin credential or database access. So in the first step, uh, attacker already has access to your system or has access within your network and is now basically sniffing through the logs and trying to identify which is, what's his next step, right? Uh, in intrusion, attackers have now gathered enough knowledge uh, about your infrastructure and then they start pushing out, uh, uh, I would say either malware or uh, Trojan viruses so that they're able to exploit uh, the security uh, flaws uh, within your infrastructure, right? Uh, in exploitation, uh, they start uh, introducing malicious code into your system. Uh, privileged escalation. So this is where uh, the attacker has now got access to, uh, or, or has now has got access to a, an admin account, and he's logged in as an admin account and impersonating admin and accessing several systems. So as soon as he starts accessing several systems, that becomes a lateral movement. So now he's sitting or he's, on one machine from that machine, he's able to access different machines or multiple machines and start get, getting more and more information uh, about um, your organization. So in this way, uh, there are several steps that, your, uh, that the attacker goes through and Azure Defender can start providing you security right from the first stage to the last stage, right? It is one service that has all the features, uh, has insights to provide you information so that you can take necessary steps. So what is Azure Defender? So Azure Defender is a centralized view of all your Azure services and their active security state. Right, uh, it gives you uh, security information. It gives you policy management information, and it helps you detect threats that might uh, otherwise uh, not be detected or go unnoticed 
Uh, and this is where it has three cycles, right? It has three stages, prevention, detection, and response. So in prevention, it gives you options to go ahead and apply certain uh, policies, certain rules, so that an attack doesn't even take place. For example, a classic example is it helps you understand which users do not have multi-factor authentication enabled, right? Or which virtual machines have uh, port 80, port 3389, which is RDP port open for, 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 the, for the entire internet. So these are potential uh, pointers for, uh, for, for security flaws and it helps you prevent uh, these security flaws and there are certain uh, prevention rules which can be automated as well. So with a click of a button, you can go ahead and let's say enable certain policy that gets applied. Now, the next one is detection. So uh, Defender automatically is able to collect and analyze the security data uh, that can be from network, that can be even from uh, other solutions. For example, if you're running your own um, antivirus solution on, on, on Azure, like Trend Micro or Sophos, it, you can, most of the security vendors now have a connector to um, Azure. And with that information, it is able to pull that information and use its own cloud intelligence. So Azure Defender in the back end is also getting data from uh, Microsoft global, uh, uh, I would say, global services like Microsoft has its own uh, uh, security uh, operations center. Microsoft has its own digital crime unit. It has its own threat protection ecosystem where it is also learning where and how the issues are happening and correlating that issues with the issues that you are facing in your infrastructure, right? So it uses machine learning, it uses big data, uh, analytics uh, to understand uh, what's happening uh, in the other part of the world correlated with what's happening in your environment. And that is how it is able to quickly detect uh, even, the, even the minute changes uh, in terms of security and provide you with alerts and notifications. So the last one is response, right? So uh, let's say you detected an issue. It also gives you uh, a page where you can see which are the top uh, top issues to take care of it, or it basically helps you prioritize the issues and incidents, right? It offers you insights into uh, the source of the attack and any other impacted resources along with suggestions on how you can actually go ahead and stop the attack and take measures so that this attack doesn't happen again, right? So, it provides you prevention, detection, and response. There are two uh, pricing tiers. Uh, the free tier is uh, by default enabled uh, for, for every, anybody and everybody using Azure. Now, uh, this is enabled by default, but you can disable it. Uh, and then there is a standard tier, which is, uh, I would say, the, the licensed or the cost tier. Uh, and there are different costs associated with different service. So, if you want a protection uh, around virtual machine, <clears throat> there's a different cost. If you need protection around database or SQL server, there's a different cost. So those are things that come uh, under standard, but free is, is uh, available for uh, every user. And under free, you will get an insight about secure score, right? Uh, secure score is, basically a snapshot of how secure is your infrastructure, right? Now, it basically gives you a, a current uh, snapshot of your security situation. Uh, the higher the score, the lower the risk, right? So uh, it is always recommended that you should be at least 85% and above uh, to make sure that you have a, a proper um, uh, protection against any malware, any unauthorized access, or any phishing attacks from external parties. Uh, Secure Score also gives you information about which are the top 
uh, issues that you have to remediate in order to get uh, the uh, in order to improve your secure score right so it says for example if you enable uh, multi factor for example it says you will get 15 points and if you enable a vulnerability assessment on certain virtual machines you will get let's say six points right so it helps you prioritize which is the incident that you have to look into and make sure you address it first and then other issues are also uh, provided uh, with that uh, not only uh, the the secure score it also gives a quick snapshot about your uh, regulatory compliance as well so in in, in the demo you will see uh, a, a snapshot or an overview page of azure defender and that is where you will see information about secure score you'll see information about regulatory compliance uh, and information about uh, what are the top issues happening within uh, what are the top issues currently in your infrastructure and and how you can fix it Another very important feature about Azure Defender is just-in-time access. A lot of uh, partners that I work with uh, use virtual machines in one way or the other, and uh, using just-in-time access is probably the most important and most basic uh, security feature to put in place, right? Now, what is just-in-time access? Just-in-time access means, by default, the virtual machine access is always blocked. Right, so which means your 3389 port is always closed, especially for RDP, right? You can request access for the virtual machine for a specific amount of time, and you can also have an approval mechanism around this access. That is what just-in-time access means. So what this does in the background is when you initiate a just-in-time access, it goes ahead, opens up, or configures the network security group uh, to, uh, let's say, open the RDP port or open the port that you requested for uh, and allows you to access this particular uh, port for a certain amount of time or access this particular virtual machine for a certain amount of time. All the activity that happens when uh, the just-in-time is active, right? all of that is logged so all data get into activity log so when was it opened who accessed it the source ip uh, any changes done to the virtual machine which means did they change the ip address or did they add a disk remove a disk did they download the disk or did they install a new extension so all of these events will get logged during that particular time frame and once the time frame once the access is revoked again uh, the user doesn't have any more access to it. So a very important and interesting feature, uh, especially uh, for partners who uh, who manage uh, the Azure infrastructure of a customer end-to-end, -end. Uh, this is a very important and, and a good feature to have uh, for so that your customers don't uh, unauthorized access or, or don't access without your knowledge. And even within your own team, um, uh, somebody doesn't just access it in the night without uh, a proper approval process around it, right? So that is just-in-time access. There are other features of Azure Defender as well, but these are probably the two most important features, uh, secure score and just-in-time, uh, which can be used by majority of, uh, of my customers and partners. So let's uh, jump on to a quick demo on Azure Security Center. Uh, let me just go ahead and stop sharing for a minute. If you have any questions, uh, please use the uh, Q&A or the chat and let me know. Just a second. Uh, 
So there is a question here. Uh, does this add much cost to Azure bill? Uh, Philip, are you talking about secure, uh, sorry, Defender? Or are you talking about Monitor? Uh, if you can just help me understand. Both of them, yes, they will add a little bit of cost. Uh, yeah, Azure Monitor, yes, it, it definitely adds cost, but it, it's not much. Uh, I would say, I mean, we can definitely look at the Azure Calculator, but probably, I mean, if you're monitoring it for a but for one virtual machine, for example, it will probably add, I would say, between eight to ten dollars a month. Right? It's not too expensive. Um, it's not a it's not a very expensive service. Um, uh, so uh, you can definitely incorporate the cost as part of your managed services offering to your customer. Azure Defender or Security Center, each service, uh, <coughs> sorry, each service has its own cost. Um, so virtual machine, if I'm not wrong, is about twenty five dollars a month. Uh, SQL is, I think, eighteen dollars a month. So there is different cost for each um, security monitoring or uh, each defender agent uh, with respect to service. Uh, but monitoring is one simple cost. Uh, and I mean, if you if you have a scenario, you can drop me an email offline, and and we can look into more details of it. Okay, so uh, this is uh, a quick snapshot about Azure uh, Defender or Azure Security Center. So uh, like I said, both both are the same, uh, but uh, the, the naming changed from Security Center to Defender. So this is the snapshot, this is the, the overview page of Azure Security Center. As you can see, I provide you information with respect to your uh, security posture. It provides you information with respect to uh, how hygiene uh, your resources are, uh, regulatory uh, information is also provided. Uh, if you have multiple subscriptions, it also provides information about on how many subscriptions do you have uh, the standard enabled. So all this information is part of standard. Uh, free, you will get very uh, little information or less information, and the information is primarily around uh, the secure score. So what we'll do is we'll uh, look more detailed into the uh, policy management. So uh, if I click on Azure uh, Security Hyg I'm sorry, Resource uh, Security Hygiene, uh, this is where you will see more information around how your virtual machines um, health is, how your data health is, how your IoT health is, and, and the last one is your threat protection, right? So. Uh, how effectively have you been able to block certain uh, attacks, uh, things like brute force attack uh, or unauthorized access, and which are the top uh, incidents, uh, high priority incidents uh, that are currently within your infrastructure. So let's look at overall secure score first. So under the overall secure score, I have secure score, uh, sorry, I have standard enabled across two subscriptions, and it shows me uh, the the percentage across two subscriptions, right? Uh, now, if you are a, a partner who's who's managing multiple Azure customers and multiple, I mean, each customer having their own subscription, uh, in, in the upcoming slides, I'll also show you how you can use Azure Monitor, I'm sorry, how you can use Azure Defender to get insight across multiple Azure customers from a single location. So that is also something I'll, I'll be covering towards the end of today's session. But here you can see a quick snapshot of uh, how your uh, subscriptions are, uh, how uh, the security across your subscriptions. Right now, if I click on this AC demo, it also shows me the details of uh, the various uh, security measures, right? So. Uh, it shows me which uh, which one if I uh, go ahead and resolve. For example, it says remediate vulnerabilities. It has eight points. Enable encryption at rest. Uh, this has three points and out of 28, uh, 28 resources are non-compliant with it. Then you have managed uh, secure uh, management ports. So if I click on remediate uh, vulnerabilities, you see there are certain options which are uh, uh, 
which can be deployed using quick fix. Now, this is again, uh, I would say probably a very important feature. Uh, in the background, uh, Microsoft has collaborated with Qualys. Qualys is one of the industry standards for vulnerability assessment, right? So uh, Microsoft has collaborated with Qualys and they have uh, automated the process of going ahead and deploying the agent uh, via the Azure Security Center. So if I go ahead and click on Quick Fix, it'll actually go ahead and list down which are the virtual machines um, that are uh, unhealthy. And I can go ahead and uh, uh, click on remediation steps and see how I can quickly go ahead and uh, deploy that particular agent. As you can see, uh, it says uh, the type is this, and the name is this, and it will go ahead and deploy this particular agent for me. Right? So it's not just listing down the, uh, the issues, it also provides you, um, I would say, quick response uh, or quick automated response in order to go fix it. So going back to Azure Security uh, Center or overview of the Azure Security, uh, let's now look at uh, a little bit about uh, compliance, right? Uh, a lot of companies typically follow various compliance. They have PC, uh, PCI, they have ISO, or they have their own uh, you know, compliance defined. Uh, so that's available under uh, compliance. So if I click on uh, regulatory compliance, you can see there are different compliance standards. Uh, you have Canada Federal, Azure Security Benchmark, Azure CIS, and SWIFT C, uh, CSP um, uh, security compliance. But you can also go ahead and define or create your own compliance. And you can also download the compliance report. Uh, a lot of partners had this uh, request for Microsoft where they wanted Microsoft to, be, uh, to have an ability to go ahead and download the the compliance report, uh, especially for auditing purposes. And now Microsoft has given you that option. So you, as you can see here, if I click on download report, I can actually go ahead and select um, Azure Security Benchmark. And if I click on download, this is the sample report which I have, right? Where it provides you uh, sections, summary of the various, uh, you know, uh, information that, that it has. It gives me information about uh, now what was passed, what was failed. So all that information is available uh, within this particular report, right? Right from networking and all of those things. So let's let me go back to the Azure Security Center, and uh, this time we'll look at uh, networking hygiene. So under resource hygiene, I have this networking hygiene. So if I click on that it shows me what are the various networking recommendations it has, right? So for example, subset should be associated with network security group. There is none, which means it's good, there's no issues. Management ports uh, should be protected with just-in-time access. So this is what we spoke about earlier. We'll come back to this quick fix uh, in, in the next section. But if I wanna get a quick network design or network architecture, if I click on uh, the network map, it shows me which virtual networks are connected to which VMs and which NIC card and how, right? So it's it's a very interesting information uh, that, uh, that is provided. Now here, if I go ahead and click on one of the virtual machines, right? So um, the virtual machine three provides me information in terms of what was the issue, what was uh, the action, the reason why it is on a high alert. So it says just in type policy should be applied to the virtual machine and hence there's high alert on this particular VM3. And that is what uh, we can go ahead and also apply from Azure Security Center. So going back to the overview. So looking at workflow automation next, which will help us go ahead and uh, automate uh, the response, right? So within workflow, uh, automation, we can look at logic apps and how you can potentially, if you're using a service like, uh, you know, what do you say, uh, ServiceNow, uh, you can also integrate ServiceNow with uh, Azure logic apps and Azure Security Center 
to provide the ticketing automation within your uh, infrastructure as well. So here, if I click on workflow automation, these are the various uh, workflows that are already created, but I can click on add a workflow automation and define my own uh, automation as well. So here uh, I can go ahead and give it a name. Uh, I can provide a description. I can select the subscription that I want, the resource group within that, and then start creating the alert. So I can say the alert is defined for uh, updates for virtual machines. Uh, it should be all in the recommended state. And if it is not, I should be alerted, right? So if I go ahead and create this, the security uh, automation alert, I'm sorry, the security response, the workflow response for that will get created. So uh, this is where you can start creating your own IPs, right? So this is where you can differentiate yourself from other service providers by providing your own uh, automation uh, workflow automation as a response or automated response for your customers next uh, let's click back on uh, let's let's also look at compute and apps so if i go back uh, and here if i press compute and apps so compute and apps so under uh, recommendations i have several once I can click on remediate and here uh, we spoke about just-in-time access, right? So how you can go ahead and enable uh, just-in-time access for a lot of your customers. So under advanced cloud defense, if I click on just-in-time VM access, these are the VMs uh, which are configured uh, with just-in-time access. Uh, now if I click on the first one, and say request access. So this is how the access is requested. Uh, and here I can define the ports allowed IP or IP range. So uh, in the port, I would say 3389 uh, and then uh, allow it only for the next two hours, for example, right? And here, if I say open port, that particular, uh, IT, that particular virtual machine is now available uh, for just-in-time access, okay? So that was a, a quick demo around uh, Azure uh, Defender. Um, do you have any questions around Azure Defender? Uh, please post it on the Q&A or the chat. We'll then jump on to our last topic, which is Azure Sentinel. Just wait for couple of seconds here to know if you have any further questions. Okay, so no questions coming up. So before we talk about Sentinel, um, I wanna take a step back and talk about what is a SIM solution or what is SIM? SIM stands for Security Information and Event Management. It's a software that is able to uh, provide you a unified security status of your entire infrastructure, right? So it's not just uh, event management, it is also information management. So uh, we'll, in, the, in the upcoming slides, you will see how a SIM solution is different than Azure Defender, right? Because even Defender provides you security related information but how is it different? Uh, what are the benefits um, of using uh, an Azure uh, or, or, or a SIM solution? So one of the benefit of using Azure, I'm sorry, SIM solution is uh, it definitely increases efficiency. Now, Azure Defender is primarily around, uh, uh, like I said, security score, it is around uh, vulnerability assessment, uh, it is about just-in-time access, uh, whitelisting application. So that is another feature that is part of Azure Defender. So you can actually go ahead, uh, do a whitelisting of applications. So all of these are available in Azure Defender. But how can you correlate things which are happening within Azure Defender or things which are happening in Azure with what is happening in your, let's say, firewall? or what is happening in Office 365. How are you able to correlate uh, 
an issue uh, where a mailbox received a malware, uh, a phishing attack. He clicked on the email that gave unauthorized access to uh, the desktop. From the desktop, he's able to access some virtual machine. So how do you correlate all this and have a solution which is not just looking at a uh, virtual machine or just in time access, but is able to look at all of your infrastructure from networking to storage to SaaS applications to your, let's say, firewalls which you're running to VPN gateways. That is where SIM solution uh, comes into place, right? So it definitely improves your efficiency and able to quickly identify. Uh, issues and take suitable actions. Um, it is reducing the impact on security breaches. So it also definitely works with Azure Defender, right? So you can push the data from Azure Defender into a SIM solution and uh, start providing more proactive-based uh, measures or proactive-based um, services to your customers. Uh, it, it also helps you in better monitoring uh, and log analytics. Like I said, it is not just looking at Azure as an infrastructure, it is looking at your entire IT landscape as, uh, uh, as a unit and then providing you uh, details of where, how, what is happening. So the implementation of a SIM solution on Azure is Azure Sentinel. So Azure Sentinel uh, is a SIM and a SOAR solution. So SIM means security and information event management. SOAR means security operations and automate uh, remediation tool, right? So it is also not just reporting you the information, it is also able to orchestrate an automated response to the incident that, uh, that it is able to detect. Now, one of the benefits of Azure Sentinel is it's it's cloud scale, right? So it is running on Azure, so you don't really have to worry about its scalability, its uh, uh, its uptime, uh, its uh, um, its working in, in simple terms. It is it is always up and running there. It very well integrates with Microsoft 365 and Office 365. Uh, and in the upcoming slides, I will talk about how you could use. Azure Defender, Sentinel, and Office 365, or how you could potentially upsell Azure Sentinel to your Office 365, Microsoft 365 customers, and provide them with a proactive-based um, security uh, offering. It very well integrates with existing tools. Like I said, it integrates with on-prem Windows, Linux machines. It integrates with Azure. It even integrates with AWS and uh, Google Cloud as well. So it is able to pull data from various locations if you also have your own SIM solutions. For example, uh, Metcafe is one of uh, is, is one solution. Uh, Splunk is a very famous uh, SIM solution. So if you have existing SIM solutions, Azure Sentinel can work with it as well. One of the best features of Azure Sentinel, especially for SMB uh, partners and customers is Sentinel doesn't have any cost, any upfront cost. And the best part is the activities of Microsoft 365, the data import from Microsoft 365 into Azure Sentinel is actually free of cost. So uh, in that way, it is a very, very good upsell to your existing Office 365 customers. So quickly looking at uh, its core capability. So it can collect data from various sources. So it can collect data from Microsoft services, from other public cloud, from other security solutions. Once it collects the data, it uses log analytics in the backend. So like I initially said, log analytics is the backbone for monitor, defender, and even SIM solution. So this is where it collects all the data from <clears throat> the data sources. And then it uses all the AI and big data engine that it has, uh, which is part of Microsoft uh, Threat Intelligence System. Uh, and then it is able to identify or give you uh, information about uh, threats. It is able to uh, uh, identify suspicious activities and it is able to uh, automate uh, a response 
and last but not the least it can also integrate with your existing ticketing solutions as well and so it's a, it's a it's it's probably the top tier security solution on that you can have across your cloud applications or cloud across your cloud infrastructure in general right so uh, a quick snapshot of why sentinel right so it auto scales a completely managed and maintained solution by microsoft uh, it is easy uh, it's not east collection it is easy i'm sorry that's a spelling mistake it's easy collection from data sources again in, in the upcoming demo you'll quickly see how easy it is and microsoft they are uh, constantly adding new data connectors or or cloud connectors using which uh, in a couple of clicks you are able to connect to that system and pull the data from it right so uh, it is very very uh, helpful and and uh, uh, easy uh, by using the existing uh, cloud connectors and if there are uh, data uh, from uh, which doesn't have an existing cloud connector uh, microsoft also has uh, a custom option which i'll cover in the upcoming slides where you could use that to still collect data from uh, from from sources which doesn't have a connector already built uh, you don't have to download any telemetry information all the data is going into cloud which means any upload into azure is by default free so all data within the sentinel and analyzing this data producing results out of it using the data to or to provide uh, security um, operations or, or improving security operations for your customer. All of that is happening within cloud. So there is no data traffic between on-prem and Azure uh, just for uh, giving uh, uh, security services for your customer. Uh, like other advantage, you can always start small and grow as required. Um, like I said, upfront cost is actually nothing. It's, it starts with zero. And as and when you start adding more and more customer data into it, that's where um, the cost would increase. So uh, you can grow and scale as your customer size or customer uh, infrastructure also increases. So how does Azure Sentinel work with other Azure or other Microsoft products? Uh, like you see here, uh, Azure Sentinel sits on top of the entire Microsoft threat protection landscape. So it can pull data from Azure Defender. It can pull data from Microsoft Defender for endpoints. So if you are a customer who's currently using Microsoft Defender for endpoints as an EDR solution, then Azure, uh, uh, Azure Sentinel can pull data from it. Microsoft Defender for identity uh, also can be pulled data or also uh, integrates with Sentinel. So your uh, the previous name was ATP, right? Uh, Advanced Threat Protection. Now it's known as Microsoft Defender for Identity. Um, so all this data which Microsoft has, uh, which uh, where Microsoft has these different agents, you can use data from all those sources and push that data into Azure Sentinel. So a quick uh, information about how uh, Defender and Sentinel works. So like I said, Azure Defender is more around Azure based services. Azure Sentinel is not just Azure. It is Azure, Microsoft 365, other cloud networking, your on-prem data sources, your Oracle data source, Microsoft, um, sorry, partner solutions like, for example, Checkpoint or Cisco or, or any other solution. So. Uh, you can pull data from uh, sources into Azure Defender to provide secure score, to provide um, regulatory compliance, and the same data can also be pushed into Azure Sentinel. And then you can correlate data between different uh, cloud platforms itself. So whatever is happening in Office 365, let's say if somebody uh, has an unauthorized access to a OneDrive document, and then with that data, they are able to access some resources, some networks, which they shouldn't be. All of that correlation can be done via Azure Sentinel. So like I said, it's an end-to-end -end, uh, solution for security operations. Um, this is a very, very good solution 
if you are a customer who is looking or if you are a partner who is looking to set up your own security operations center right so uh, that's now becoming i would say the next big thing in the it industry uh, where partners uh, set up their own security operations center and are able to provide useful and insightful information about a customer's uh, uh, security landscape right so azure sentinel can definitely be the tool that can help you with it because like you see in this slide it is able to collect detect investigate and respond to it so in the upcoming slides we'll quickly look at each of them and see what are the functionalities that it provides so it can collect data i can say it can collect data from on prem it can collect data from cloud not only azure but also third party cloud platforms as well now from on prem you definitely need to install a certain agent now uh, for agent there are multiple options for some of the third party solutions microsoft already has a connector but for some of them they do not have it so that is where you will need to have an intermediate system called as a, a collector proxy right so this collector proxy is more like a virtual machine or a, or a system which can collect data from your uh, from your applications for example from your firewall or from your virtual appliance or from your um, existing sim solution and push that data into azure sentinel so in this scenario like you see for example f5 barracuda these are platforms that already have an api or a connector pre built but for uh, let's say firewall from checkpoint or firewall from palo alto they don't have the connector built yet right so uh, for these you can always use uh, a syslog connector or a basically a lock collect a lock collector proxy or lock collector virtual machine uh, which can collect the data and then use that with azure now this particular proxy can be either deployed on on prem or it can be deployed in azure as well so both the options are possible and you don't need to open a lot of ports for it to actually work uh, as well there is only one or two ports that you need to open and once it's open you can actually go ahead and collect the data from your on prem um, uh, resources which do not currently have a data connected and push that data into azure sentinel okay now that you have data what next so azure defender already has more than 100 pre built or built in uh, rules or i would say policies that can help you identify issues right uh, again if you are new to uh, setting up your own operations center uh, this is something that is uh, very uh, very helpful so these are pre built uh, you can say alert rules which are already developed by microsoft and available within sentinel um, for uh, Office 365, Microsoft 365, the last time I checked, there were roughly about 28 to 30 rules that Microsoft has already created and made available. So you could potentially start providing proactive security operations, or pro uh, you can start providing security operations for your Office 365 customer by using the pre-built uh, alert rules itself, right? But if you are looking at creating your own rules, you can definitely do that. Um, it uses a custom query language called KQL, very similar to SQL query. So it's the same from, uh, from the table where uh, a certain condition. So it's a, it's a very select star from where kind of a syntax and you're able to query through all the logs within the log analytics, uh, which is the backend of Sentinel and come out with your own uh, rules and customizations as well. So uh, Sentinel, because of the pre-built uh, data, it also uh, looks into a lot of <clears throat> uh, uh, rules and regulations. I'm sorry, it, it also looks into the data of other, uh, uh, other sources. For example, if Microsoft uh, security operations team uh, see there is a particular issue happening in another region 
they will quickly create a, an alert or a rule if not if it doesn't exist and that can be made available to all the customers or that will be made available to all the customers and you can quickly deploy and identify uh, issues at, at your end as well now microsoft has been uh, uh, using cloud services to provide uh, security across not just azure but it, they analyze data from xbox they analyze data from hotmail from live accounts and this is one of the reasons why microsoft is able to quickly identify security anomalies and come out with uh, with um, uh, alerts and and possible uh, remediations for it uh, hunting is probably the most important feature of azure sentinel so so far we saw how you could use existing rules and uh, alerts that you uh, that microsoft has provided but hunting is where you run these existing rules and alerts proactively right or you create your own rules your own queries and you run it proactively uh, on the systems right so this will this is basically you assuming that there is always uh, uh, a breach and keep and and running these queries running these rules in order to identify where the issue is so um, that's what hunting is. So detection via hunting is where you can um, have your operations team run certain uh, uh, rules or queries uh, at a certain point uh, every day or in a week's time, and then monitor uh, the live stream of uh, uh, or monitor the outcome in, in uh, via the live stream. So uh, hunting uh, within Azure Security Sentinel. Uh, is uh, I would say uh, uh, a, a use case for a lot of uh, customers because here you are not just relying on an issue and then responding to that issue, but you are being more proactive, creating your own uh, hunting queries based on the customer environment, right? So some customers might have smaller infrastructure where they have just a couple of virtual machines, but some have virtual desktop, some of them have virtual desktop and SQL and other applications. So depending on how the customer infrastructure is, you can go ahead and build these queries. And um, then the queries obviously result into incidents if there are any issues. And at Sentinel also has incident management. So incident is when you have an issue and you next need to assign this issue to um, an operation, uh, security operations engineer. Right, who will then uh, hopefully track the issue, resolve it, take remediation steps, and also provide information, provide uh, documentation around that issue as well. Uh, Sentinel definitely provides a lot of visualization uh, of how the issues are related with each other. So it provides you timelines, provides you deeper understanding into how, uh, let's say, your users with Office 365, with Azure, um, and your OS, all these correlate and how it actually is impacting your infrastructure. You can always automate using uh, Logic Apps. So Logic Apps is, uh, you can think of it as a workflow engine where you can uh, define saying if there is an alert, if there is an incident, who should be uh, uh, replying to it or do you want uh, automatically an incident to be created in service now and things like that. So you can, you can automate uh, this. So quickly covering the remaining slides. So like I said, you can always provide proactive uh, security services with Azure Sentinel and Azure Lighthouse. I don't know how many of you know what Azure Lighthouse is. Azure Lighthouse is a service in uh, within Azure that lets you manage multiple Azure subscriptions from a single plane of glass, right? So imagine if you combine Azure Sentinel and Azure Lighthouse, you are able to provide security operations center to all your Azure customers from a single plane of glass, right? From a single screen, right? So that is the power of using Azure Sentinel and Azure Defender. I'm sorry, Azure Sentinel and Azure Lighthouse. So how does Azure Lighthouse work? So typically what happens today is every MSP, they actually go ahead and create an account, either a guest account or a user account in each and every customer subscription 
right? This is how today it happens. So you will need to um, adhere to the customer's uh, account policies. You'll need to remember the username and password. And if let's say one of your support engineer moves from one department to another, you basically have to reset the password of that account in every subscription. What Azure Lighthouse does, it's the other way around. Instead of you having access to them, all the resources which are part of the customer's subscription or the customer's resource group are projected into your subscription, right? So in layman terms, all their resources are now visible within your own subscription. And if they're part of your own subscription, you can create your own alerts, rules, policies, procedures. You can use Azure Monitor Defender to provide uh, the security services to those uh, to those resources or items. Uh, customer onboarding is very, very simple and easy. Um, uh, or I will be sharing the slide deck so you will uh, you can go through this particular uh, GitHub article uh, that provides you with information. All you need is tenant ID, subscription ID, uh, and MSP is your own, right? As a partner, it is your tenant and your subscription. And you as an MSP, you could actually use your MP and Azure subscription as well. So Azure Lighthouse is not just part of Azure CSP. You can use Azure Lighthouse to manage customers who are on pay as you go, who are in EA, and who are in CSP. You can also publish your own managed services offering also. So more about this, uh, I've already done a webinar uh, around Azure Lighthouse. Um, so I've done how you can onboard a customer onto Azure Lighthouse, how you can use Azure Security Center and Azure Monitor with Azure Lighthouse. So I'll again share this particular presentation. It has this recording links, go through it. And if you need assistance in implementing it, you can always get in touch with me. Finally, I wanna summarize the entire security series by using the security, uh, cybersecurity reference architecture. So this is the reference architecture that Microsoft has published. In this, as you can see, security operations center is able to collect data from every source, right? Right from your Office 365, your SaaS-based application data comes into this, your client application, your security center app information, your IoT information, your um, Office 365 information, your even your intelligent security graph, all the information can flow within uh, security operation center and Azure Sentinel can provide you information across Azure, Microsoft, um, cloud app security, or even any other uh, security uh, solutions that you have. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, that pretty much brings me to the end of today's session and today's uh, this particular series. Uh, before I go ahead and end the call, I just want to post a quick question. This is part of the quiz that we are having. Um, so a quick question, which service should MSP use to manage multiple Azure subscriptions? Okay, I'll just wait for another five seconds on this particular question. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So the right answer is Azure Lighthouse. So Azure Lighthouse is the service that lets you manage multiple Azure subscriptions. Thank you very much for participating in the poll. Uh, now, before I end today's session, uh, I do want to know what is the next topic that you guys are interested in uh, hearing from me or hearing from Ingram Micro. So there are a couple of topics that I've put on this particular screen. Uh, uh, do let us know what is that you would like to learn more about and how, um, so that it helps us define the next topics. So I would uh, appreciate if uh, all of you can participate and let me know what topics are you looking for uh, from Ingram to, to help you understand, help you uh, get more uh, insights about? Uh, it is a multiple choice uh, uh, 
uh, session. Uh, do not select everything. Uh, do select what what you are really interested in, so that we can design and develop uh, uh, sessions and initiatives around it. Okay, so I'll go ahead and close this particular poll in five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So thank you very much for sharing. Uh, let me also share the results. So it seems that a lot of customers, a lot of you are interested in um, Microsoft Defender for endpoints, which is an endpoint security. We'll definitely have a session around it. I also see a lot of interest in um, Sentinel, so uh, integrating Azure Sentinel with Office 365. So we'll definitely uh, do something around that. So thank you very much for sharing your uh, sharing your feedback. We'll definitely come out with more sessions around them, uh, and and we'll keep you all posted. Uh, we do have a question from an attendee here. What security role is required to give access to Azure Sentinel? So. Uh, for Azure Sentinel dashboard, there are different roles uh, within Azure. So there is security operations engineer, there is security operations operator. Um, so the operator is the one who would have access to Azure Sentinel dashboard. Uh, security operations engineer is the one who actually goes ahead and remediates the issue. So there are different roles specifically built around Azure Sentinel, which uh, we would need, uh, which, which we would assign to users. Uh, uh, Phil, I hope that that answers your question. Great. So uh, uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for attending today's session and all the other sessions. I hope the sessions were helpful and informative. If you do have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with me. Uh, I will be on the chat for the next 10 minutes. Uh, but if you don't have any questions, this pretty much uh, brings us to the end of the series. Thank you once again for your time and uh, uh, and your valuable feedback. Thank you and have a great uh, weekend ahead.